What's up, fellas? How you doing, man? It's Anelli here. All right, so today we're talking about college baseball using electronic wristbands to call pitches. And so we're going to get into exactly what is going on, and then I want your opinion. I'm going to give you my insight as well. College baseball started this past weekend, and a lot of buzz around particularly Vanderbilt. Uh, they're using electronic wristbands, so it, it almost looks basically like a watch. And what happens is the pitching coach is able to send in the pitch and the pitch location to all nine defenders. So it goes to the pitcher, the catcher, and then every defender on the field. And so basically you'll see everyone look down at their watch or their electronic device, see what the pitch and location is, Catcher doesn't have to give any signs, and we just deliver the pitch. And so um, this is new this year. This was not allowed in previous years, but this is a new change to the rules. And a lot of people, I'm getting a lot of messages online. Twitter kind of was blowing up. Uh, people that were in favor of it, people that absolutely hated it. And so let me give you kind of my thought process when it comes to this. And then I would like to hear yours in the comment section Below. Okay, so let's first talk about some of the positives, things that I think um, this does to help the game. I think the biggest thing is it speeds things up. And you can tell how quickly the pitcher is able to just kind of look down, get the sign. We don't have to wait for catchers to give signs and we throw. So it's going to speed the game up. Let me give you a little bit of insight again into how it normally works. And so in the college game especially, I would say most programs the pitching coach is going to call the pitches. So the pitching coach is going to relay the sign that he wants into the catcher, who is then going to relay the sign to the pitcher. Now, this can take a while. This is the way that it's done, usually, again, two ways. The first way, and this is more of the old school way, is the pitching coach is going to go through a number of touches, and that is indicating to the catcher what pitch and what location we want the pitch to be thrown to. Now the catcher has to read that sign from the coach, and then he has to then put down signs to the pitcher, who has to read those signs, and now we've all figured out what pitch we want to throw, and we make the pitch, okay? So that's one way. There's another way that has become more popular, especially in college baseball, and it's using wristbands, and it's a number system. And so typically there's three numbers that are called out, and the catcher is going to look down at his wristband and he's going to match the numbers up and he's going to go across and it's going to show what pitch and what location to make that pitch to. So it's going to look like this. The catcher is going to look over at the pitching coach. The pitching coach in his mind is going to say, okay, I want a fastball outside corner. He's going to look down at his little sheet or wristband and say, okay, that's one, zero, three. All right. So he's going to go one, zero, three, and he's going to give it into the catcher. And then the catcher is going to look at his wristband and he's going to go across and go one, zero, three, fastball outside corner. Now he's going to go down and he's going to give a sign. Right. And so this, you can see how this can take a little, a little time. And there's been times where the catcher can't see or understand what pitch, you know, what number is being called, or, you know, maybe the coach is going through here and the catcher's like, do that again. I missed that first touch. And then finally we get the sign in and the batter says, you know, time. And then we've got to start all over again. Right. So this is a much easier, more efficient way to do it much, much quicker. And so I think when it comes to speeding up the game, I personally have no problem with this. I think it is definitely a positive. Now, the other positive, and you can also look at this as a negative, I guess it can go both, both ways, is that it limits the amount of sign stealing. And so there really isn't a way to steal signs unless you either hack into the system. Um, you can still steal, steal signs based off how the pitcher sets up. So he might set up differently depending on which pitch he's throwing. You can steal it off the way that the catcher sets up. And you can steal it off the way the defenders might tip a pitch, right? So if they know a fastball away is coming, they might shift slightly, anticipating that it's going to go over there. You've got to be careful not to do that too early, and you could tip the pitches. So pitches can still be stolen, but they can't be stolen in the traditional sense as far as... There's a few different ways. The first way is you can steal it off the pitching coach, right? So if the pitching coach is doing this, well, you can steal that system. If the pitching coach is giving numbers out, you can steal it. It gets a little tougher because they can switch the cards that are on on everyone's wristbands, right? You can steal it off the catcher, that's the main way, because especially with men on base, when they're given their, you know, their number system, um, you can steal those. Or if the catcher, even if there's no one on base, sometimes the catcher's 
they, they don't keep their knees close together and they get really wide. And so the first base coach or the third base coach can see the signs or a runner at first or third can see the signs and relay them. So that part of stealing the signs goes away, right? And so um, a lot of people say that's part of the game. And I do think it is, it is part of the game, um, but there's other ways that you can steal the signs, okay? I think the positive thing is it doesn't allow teams to steal signs illegally. I guess it still can. You still can probably hack the system. But, you know, we saw what happened in the major leagues with people stealing signs illegally, not using their eyes, but using technology. And that should be limited uh, using this system. So, again, you can look at it from a positive point of view. The signs aren't going to get stolen. Also, some people look at it on the negative side and say, well, stealing signs is part of the game. And now, all of a sudden, we, we can't steal signs anymore, okay? For me, um, those are kind of the positive things that come out of it. Now, the biggest negative that I've seen, and this is from people, a uh, couple things. One, um, saying, well, this basically makes all the players a bunch of robots, right? Just a bunch of idiot robots, and they don't have to think through the game anymore. They just look down at their wrist. They see the pitch. They throw it. The catcher just looks at his wrist. He sees fastball. Okay, catch it. Now, this might surprise you, maybe it doesn't, but in college baseball, again, most programs, the pitching coach calls the signs, right? So just because now they're doing it through a watch, it doesn't really change anything. They've always just called the signs, right? This is just making it quicker and easier instead of having to go through the old school way of doing it. And that's just the way it is for most college programs. Some people say, why? That's not preparing the players, not letting them learn the game and think the game. And I understand Listen, I coach at the high school level. I coach travel ball. I let my catchers call the game because I do think that is part of, part of the game. Learning and understanding the game as both the pitcher and the catcher. I will also say at my level, we have much less information on the other team. There's much less scouting. And so in summer ball, right, like I don't see the – we see a team once a year. We, we don't have any scouting reports or anything. So I let the guys – call their pitches. Now, there are, there are certain times where I see a kid swing and I might say, hey, next time let's attack this guy with fastballs. Um, and there is a way if I want to call a certain pitch that I can do it. But I just put most of the onus on the catcher and the pitcher and let them do it, all right? But again, that's summer ball and even high school ball. But when you're talking about college baseball, a couple of things to keep in mind. One, there's a lot on the line, especially if you're a high-level program, a Power 5 program. Coaches are getting paid lots and lots and lots of money, and they can get fired if they, don't, if they don't win. And so most pitching coaches are not going to allow an 18 or 19 or 20 or 21-year-old to make those decisions, which are really, really important decisions, um, just because they say, well, I want this kid to learn the game, right? They want to win the game. And if you think about it from their perspective, a pitching coach in college is studying. They've got videotape. Their, their job is to, to be as prepared as possible to play that game. And so they know the opposing lineup and they know the hitter's strengths and weaknesses and they have all the data. If you think about it from the player's perspective, these are college student athletes that go to class during the day and they have social lives and it, they're not professional players and there's only a limited amount of time. Literally, NCAA only allows you to practice and play so much each week. And so they're not going to be as prepared. It's not like a major league player whose job it is to prepare for the game. And so it makes sense that the college coach is going to say, I've done all the preparation. My players didn't have time. He was in math class earlier today, right? I've been watching film. I'm going to make the call, okay? So I know some people say that it dumbs it down for the players, but that's just the way it is in, in college baseball. That's the way it's always kind of been. That's the way it's, I've coached in college. Um, and I know tons of college players, and I've played in college, and I'd say the majority of the programs, that's how it works. The college pitching coach makes the call to the catcher. Um, do the pitchers have the opportunity to shake off? Depends usually on a couple things. One, the pitcher. If he's an older pitcher who has shown that he has an understanding of um, – when to shake off and when not to. Sometimes coaches will give those pitchers the ability to do so. Um, but I've seen some programs where they say, if you shake me off, like you better just head to the, to, like hit the showers, literally. Um, and so it really just depends. But I would say most of the time, the pitchers are just taught, throw the pitch, 
that I tell you to throw. And we can get into a whole nother discussion about, you know, is the wrong pitch with conviction better than the right pitch without conviction, right? That's all, that's, we've talked about that in the past. And that's enough, that, again, we're not going to get into that today. But um, so that's, that's really, I think, the, the negative that a lot of people see with it. Again, I've been around college game enough to know that it really was never part of the game, letting the catchers and the pitchers really work together. I'm not saying, again, every program doesn't do that. The, there's some programs that do probably allow the catcher and the pitcher to, to call pitches. Um, but most programs that I've seen, it comes from the pitching coach. So let me know what you think about this. The, actually, the part that I thought of, and, and you know, I don't know if anyone else has thought of this, and I'm not even sure how the system exactly works and how detailed you can get and, and what type of things you can put in there. But I was thinking not just from a, from a pitch calling um, point of view, right, and speeding the game up. I actually thought of the first thing when I saw this was, wow, we can control the running game like really well with this. I don't even care about the, hey, throw a fastball to the outside corner. I thought of as a coach, if I can, if I can put something in, and again, I don't, I don't know if you can do this, but if I can call for an inside move, right? Runner on second base, I think the guy's going to steal and I can type in two numbers that mean inside move. And now my middle infielders and the pitcher know that I'm calling a pick. Or if we've got first and second and I want to call a timing pick to first base, if I can put in a number that, that does that, um, that's a huge advantage to slow the running game down and to gain extra outs. So like, that's where my mind went when I saw this. I was like, holy crap, like I'd be controlling the entire defense from from the bench. Forget about the pitch call. I don't even care about that. I can call back picks from this thing. I can call timing picks and inside moves and all this stuff. Like that to me is a really big advantage and that can really stop the other team. So um, that again, you can look at it as a pot, like as a coach, I'd be like, that's a positive for me, but it's a negative when it comes to base running and base stealing. Again, I don't know how much info they can put in there, but I'm sure if they can do pitches in location that they've got to be able to be able to um, put in some type of pick system into that thing. So I'll have to do more research on that and, and try to talk to somebody that's playing at a program. If maybe you do play at a program that's using this technology, can you guys call the defensive? Can you call pick plays? Are you able to do that kind of stu that stuff? Because I think that's a big advantage. So anyways, those are my thoughts on it. I'm, I'm, so I gave you a bunch of thoughts. My final thought is I'm not against it. I think it speeds up the game. And, uh, you know, it, it doesn't change a whole lot other than the catcher giving signs. Um, you know, it speeds it up because we don't have to wait for all this stuff and all these numbers. And when did you say, coach? And I said, 103, not 130. And then, you know, time, go. Like, it just takes forever, right? Um, I think the positives probably outweigh the negatives. I understand this is new. Baseball is one of those sports where anytime something new comes out, like, people get all upset, like, especially the baseball purists. That you know the game should be me was meant to be played the way it was in 1903. Listen, every other sport adopts technology. Sport other sports move really fast. Like football moves really fast, and they do a lot of new things. And baseball is kind of like if you introduce something new in baseball, like the hardcore baseball fan gets pissed off. But you know the other the other sports are doing fine. I think that we can make adjustments in baseball, and we'll all be okay. Um, sorry if anyone gets mad. I know some people in the comments are going to be like, "You're an idiot, Matt." Like, no. We don't use watches in baseball. So that's my thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, give it a thumbs up, all that good stuff. Go watch all our other videos. We'll talk to you later. If you've got hitters that you're looking to improve before the start of next season, this is essential for you. Matt Antonelli here, former major league player, first round pick, and college coach. With this course, we're gonna show you exactly, step by step, how to generate power, develop bat speed, and enhance swing mechanics. Regardless of your hitter's age, this course is going to deliver advanced hitting techniques that will allow any hitter to get better and make an impact at the plate this spring. We have a full catalog of training content that you can access from anywhere at any time. This course is perfect for players, parents, coaches, instructors, and more. It offers a comprehensive package of drills and techniques that you can directly implement. Our course has helped hitters all over the country at different competition levels, and the feedback that we've received has been outstanding. The work you put in now will drive your success at the plate this spring. Get the essential knowledge that you need to take your game to the next level. I've put the link in the description if you want to go check it out.